Simple question. Do you have a switch mode power supply in your shack that's generating more crud than a Baofeng? If so, stick around because I'm going to show you how to resolve a lot of those problems. And I'm also going to give you a quick explanation of how a common mode choke works and the differences between a linear and a switch mode power supply. Roll the intro. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the art of engineering. In this episode, we're going to be looking at my switch mode power supply, and we're going to be asking the question, what is the difference between my Baofeng UV10R and this 12 amp supply from JCAR Electronics? I'm pretty certain the answer won't surprise you. They both produce prodigious amounts of spurious emissions. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to work on a project to make the output from this switch mode supply a lot cleaner. Not as clean as a linear supply, but as clean as we can make it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create my own design just using a common mode choke and one capacitor from the output of this supply because that's the parts that I have presently. I'm going to test it. You're going to see the results of that test. And then we're going to go and buy all the components for the Drew Diamond design that's in projects for the Radio Amateur Volume 4. And we're going to see how that performs. Strong suspicion uh, Drew Diamond's design is going to be a lot better than mine. Uh, admittedly, it's not a very complex design. Uh, he's paired it back to something that's very, very doable. All the parts are still available from JCAR. So they sell you the supply with the noisy output and they also sell you the parts you need to remediate the situation. And I'm gonna see how quiet I can make this supply, but I will be building that linear supply, the same linear supply from the same book by Drew Diamond. And uh, so well, down the track, you'll be seeing me build that as well. Anyway, Let's get on with it. Now, back in the olden days when I was a lad, I had a linear 20 amp supply. And the benefits of a linear supplier, of course, are that they are a lot quieter when it comes to RF. In fact, they don't produce RF emissions. Um, the only thing that you might get from such a supply is an audio 50 hertz hum. And if it's filtered properly, that shouldn't even happen. And that supply served me very well. And unfortunately, when I sort of gave up the hobby when I became a ship's radio officer and decided that radio was not something I wanted to do in my spare time. I gave away a lot of that stuff and that supply, which was a homebrew supply, I gave away. Now I presently am in the process of rebuilding a homebrew linear supply, which will be 20 amps, which I'll be able to run 100 watt rigs off and use it in the shack and not have uh, all that uh, spurious hash that's being produced by my switched mode power supply, SMPS. Now this is the switch mode power supply in question. So the obvious question would be, well, why use a switch mode supply when you could use a linear and it's so much better? Well, the main reason, of course, is uh, size, weight, and efficiency. A linear supply requires a massive transformer. Now, this is a transformer that I just got out of a microwave oven on the side of the road, and I'm going to be taking this five kilovolt secondary winding and rewinding this so it produces about 20 volts AC at the secondary and I'll be using this for my linear supply. This, believe it or not, weighs about four or five times as much as this entire supply. It is a hefty transformer. And you may very well be asking, well, why does the transformer and linear supply have to be so large? Some of you might already know this and you can fast forward. But the main reason is because um, the secondary winding, if you want to have it at a high current, you need to have a very, very large core to get the required flux density at the given frequency of 50 hertz. And you may very well be asking, I'm just going to put this down because my arm's getting tired. You may very well be asking, well, how does this little piece of magic produce 12 amps and be so light? Well, it's got a tiny transformer in it. And the transformer is so small because what is happening here is 
they take the AC that's at 50 hertz, it's coming into the supply, and they fruit ninja it. Okay, what do I mean by fruit ninja? They chop, 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 chop. So rather than being 50 hertz, it's up in the kilohertz, anything from 20 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. And because it's a higher frequency, you don't need as large a core. So rather than having a large core and a low frequency, we have a smaller core and a higher frequency. But that higher frequency generates spurious emissions, especially because when they chop it up, it's usually a fairly non-linear, squarish type of waveform. So we end up with basically an RF generator. Now, they do their best, or they're supposed to do their best to reduce all of that, that problem. Um, and so this thing is in a metal box, which is a good start. It creates a bit of a Faraday cage, but they are still notoriously noisy. So we are going to have to find a way of filtering whatever's coming out here at the DC end and also any RF that might be introduced into the main system as well. My solution to this problem only addressed any RF that's coming out at the DC end of things. The Drew Diamond solution also has a filter at the input as well. So we filter the mains and we also filter here. So I'm expecting a much better performance and of course the components, there's more components in Drew's design and they are, I am certain, selected with the frequency of suppression that's in mines. So the whole design is going to be a lot more effective, I am assuming. But I am very interested to see just how effective even just a simple common mode choke at the output in one capacitor might be and that's going to be what my design will be. And this is 3.5 megs and there is a, a ton of crud being generated. This is with the power supply on and that's with the power supply off. So on 3.5 there is very pronounced rubbish being generated. And we've just switched on the, uh, the supply. And you can see quite a bit of RF being generated across the actual waterfall. Hands up, who hates maths? Well, actually, I don't hate maths, but I've got to say, I'm not good at it. I just came off the back of two years of engineering, got a bare pass in Maths Modelling 1, managed to get a credit in Maths Modelling 2, the engineering mathematics. So it was getting easier, but I've got to say, engineering, especially the mathematical content, for someone who's not naturally very good at maths, was very, very challenging. But I would not say that you shouldn't give it a fair old crack because if my old and adult brain can get through it I believe that anyone can with the uh, necessary effort and concentration on it but I've got to say maths just disappears off the stack with me so I promise not to do too much maths in this whole situation but this is a common mode choke and what ends up happening is I'm just going to quickly explain what's going on here in a common mode choke you have two windings and they are designed and wound in such a way that the magnetic fields for a common mode current will add up. Now, that sounds really complex. I'm going to break it down and make it even more simple than that. Basically, what is happening here is, we, you know, you could go through all the physics of it, Fleming's right-hand rule and left-hand rule and right-hand rule and Lenz's law and all that sort of stuff. All you really need to know is, this is an electromagnet. We all did this when we were in primary school. We wrapped a wire around a piece of metal and then we pass the current through and it becomes a magnet. And what's happening with this, these magnets is they're wound in such a way that when we have common mode current, common mode current means it's current that's equal and flowing in the same direction on both conductors. And usually noise and RF and whatnot that's being generated will appear in such a configuration as common mode uh, interference. So what will happen is when these common mode currents um, I1 and I2 pass through these coils, we end up with two magnetic fields and the magnetic fields have resultant fluxes which are represented by these blue arrows here. Um, I think the uh, Greek symbol is beta. But at any rate, we've got magnetic flux 1 and magnetic flux 2 and you can notice, kind of like vectors, that they're pointing in the same direction so we add them together. So we have this massive amount of magnetic flux and of course with magnetic flux comes reactance. Okay. 
um, the formula for reactants, inductive reactants, is 2 pi FL, which basically means for a given frequency and a given amount of inductance, as the inductance or the frequency goes up, the resistance to that current flow will increase. Okay? They call it a choke because it's actually choking out that RF interference. So in this instance here, we've got two common mode, uh, we've got our common mode currents, both same magnitude, traveling in the same direction, creating resultant fluxes that add up, and one giant inductor that says, RF, naughty RF, you ain't getting through here. And we end up here with pure DC. Fantastic, that's what we want. But, let's look at what happens when we're dealing with any sort of differential signal. Um, and this explanation would apply to the common mode choke that you've got using coaxial cable. Hi folks, it's that time of the video again. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you've enjoyed this video or you're getting something from it. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button. That'll encourage me to make more stuff like this. And of course, any comments you've got, positive or negative, drop them down below. I um, always love to hear from you guys. Back to the video. On your vertical antenna or one of your antennas, if you've got um, RF appearing in the shack, the, th the same theory applies here. But hold on, what happens if uh, we don't have common mode current? One of these currents is going the other way, which would mean we have differential current. So now we have I1 going this way and I2 going this way. Now, of course, if I2 is going in the opposite direction to what was going before, this flux will also reverse itself and travel in this direction. And I know I promised that we wouldn't do any maths here, but um, you can see here, if, we, if this denotes a positive, this would be a negative. So the two cancel each other out. So for this differential current, and this could be differential RF current, or DC, it doesn't really matter, um, anything that's differential rather than common mode, we're going to find that these two cancel each other out. So effectively what that means is that this inductor is invisible to that differential current. It basically makes this common mode choke disappear. Back again. So I hope I haven't confused you. This is a very basic explanation of how a common mode choke works. And I'm hoping that uh, we now have a little bit of a working knowledge how this RF common mode choke removes interference from our power supply. Okay, so this is my solution to the uh, problem of spurious RF, and it's just at the output, the DC output. And you can see here I've got single sided uh, PCB. And I've divided that up into a positive and a negative side. And I've mounted the toroid coil, which is available from JCAR. And I'll put the part number underneath in the description. And I've just wound about 10 or so turns of 15 amp wire around the coil, two of them. So it's 20 in all, turns in all, 10 down one side, 10 down the other. And a 220 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. And that is it. That's the... Uh, the whole solution in its totality. So it's a very, very simple common mode choke with a single capacitor across the output from positive to negative. And we'll just have a look at uh, how that performs with regards to the uh, interference that I just showed you earlier on the Air Spy. Okay, so we'll try it on the, the 3.5 meg uh, band, the 80 meter band, before we uh, do anything else. Anyway, this is with the power supply off, and we shall flick it on. And this is with the power supply on. And I'm pr very, very happy with that. That uh, doesn't show any of the, uh, before we had um, quite regular bands of interference happening through this waterfall and at the present moment it is looking nice and clean so very happy with that let's just flick ourselves up to the uh, 7 meg band the 40 meter band and see what's happening there and this is our 7 megs this is with it and obviously all this stuff that's happening up here is broadcast uh, shortwave interference very annoying but uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Can't put that through a common mode choke. Um, and this is uh, 
our um, 40 meter slab and that's with the, uh, the power supply on. Just keep looking at the waterfall and power supply off. And this is the power supply on. Once again, a lot cleaner than before. And finally, let's go to our 14 megahertz, 20 meter band and have a look. Once again, this is with the um, supply on. And we'll just switch it off. You can see a little bit of noise just in these places here. So it hasn't managed to get rid of um, the noise completely on the 20 meter band, um, but certainly it's cleaned it up a lot compared to before. So not a perfect situation. I'm going to just have a look down the bottom here at, uh, at the lower end of the band because that's where I'm more concerned. Um, and certainly in this section of the band, let's just have a look. We have one little stream here and that's sitting at about... Um, 14, 16. So not ideal for CW to have that noise there. But um, I would say overall, um, it's cleaned it up quite a bit. I haven't put anything on the um, on the input, on the AC side of things. And that could very well improve things as well. All in all, uh, the noise compared to before, especially on 3.5 and um, on the 7 meg band, it's like night and day. It's definitely an improvement. I would qualify that as a successful modification and um, encourages me to down the track, uh, maybe put a bit more effort into a better filter. Yeah, definitely worth an afternoon's uh, fooling around. Well, amazingly, you are still here. So thank you for staying right to the end of the video. I've enjoyed making this video. I will be back with part two to show you the Drew Diamond version of suppression for a switch mode power supply. And I've already had a lot of fun making it. So I will see you in part two. And this has been the Art of Engineering 7.3.